So last lecture, we played with some really simple uh, half reactions and balancing their electrons and writing their net. So here's an example for us. Uh, what do you think I would get if I took silver ion and copper solid? Uh, what would I produce? And what kind of half reactions would you expect to see? Well, I would assume from my junior high and grade 10 understanding uh, that my silver ion would pick up an electron and produce silver, that my copper would be giving away two electrons to become copper two plus, and learned that this is a gain of electrons, which is called a reduction half reaction. That's what makes it our oxidizing agent. And that this is a loss of electrons, which is an oxidation half reaction, and it's our reducing agent. Balancing the electrons so that I have two electrons given out and two electrons taken in, I have to multiply this by two, and then I can write my net. Two Ag pluses and a copper solid produce Ag solid and copper two plus, and that's my net redox reaction. So what would this look like? You can actually do this reaction. You can take some uh, silver nitrate solution, oops, got ahead of myself there, and I can put in some copper wire, And I can wait, not very long, 10 minutes or so. And what's going to happen is on top of that copper wire, so the silver nitrate solution is a uh, colorless solution. Sorry, I'll write that so you can read it. And this is, you know, brown copper wire. And what I'm gonna have is that brown copper wire is gonna give up its two electrons and produce Copper two plus, copper two plus is a blue solution. And so I should see my colorless solution becoming blue over time. And then I also see on top of that brown solid, I also see some shiny silver solid being produced as that silver is being produced. And it, it like literally looks like a fuzzy, beautiful, Christmas tree, and if I design it properly, I can even get kind of a star on top of the Christmas tree uh, by leaving it in solution. And so this is a, a beautiful, spontaneous reaction. We can have a look at our data tables, and we can see that the oxidizing agent is above our reducing agent. Uh, I better write this over here. Oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent on the, on the data booklet, and so therefore using our spontaneous Waterfall, this is a spontaneous reaction. It just happens magically before our eyes because the oxidizing agent grabs that electron uh, and the copper is very happy to give it away. Okay, so, but within this solution, I also have nitrate ions. So I have my silver ions, Ag pluses, but I also have this NL3 minus ions. It's an aqueous, so I also have water present. How did I know that it's the copper that gains an electron, or I mean the silver that gains an electron and the copper that loses the electron, and the nitrate and water were spectators? So in order to answer a more complicated question when looking at all species that are involved, I need to, I've just realized I haven't got a board rubber. Oh, there's one here. Uh, I need to write all my species down and then do something different with it. So for more complicated problems, we have to follow these five steps in order to make sure that we have identified the correct oxidizing agent and reducing agent. If it's nice and simple, we can probably just do it, but if it's more complicated uh, and there are more things in play, then we have to follow these five steps. So this is predicting redox reactions, which one is gonna be our oxidizing agent and which one is gonna be a reducing agent by following these five steps. So the five steps written here and also written in your notebook is to list our species, to find our strongest reducing agent, and then we're gonna write its half reaction to find the strongest oxidizing agent and write its half reaction by find I mean in our data booklet. And then we're going to be right back to where we were before. We're gonna have two half reactions written down. So we need to balance the electrons and then write our net, just like we did with the simple ones. So let's have a go. The first question in your workbook says, the first example says, 
predict the most likely redox reaction when potassium permanganate is slowly poured into an acidic solution of iron to sulfate. Okay, so that's the question for us to answer. Now it says redox reaction in it. So because it says redox reaction, we don't do science 10. I don't write down potassium permanganate plus iron 2 sulfate yields double replacement reaction. No, they get the wrong answer. And that probably will be a distractor on the diploma. So we don't want to put that down. It says redox reaction, so we know we're looking for an oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So the first step is to list our species. Within this ionic compound, which is soluble, I know that as soon as it's in solution, those two ions dissociate. And so in my species list, I'm going to have K pluses and I'm going to have MnO4 minuses. Now this is super important that the K has a charge to it. These are not potassium solids, but rather the potassium ions because it came from an ionic compound. Now I'm not saying that because I'm a chemist and I really care about this stuff, that the little symbol makes a big difference. I'm actually saying that because if you don't put the symbol there, you will choose the wrong substance and you will make the mistake of believing the wrong oxidizing agent, wrong reducing agent, half reactions are happening. So make sure you put a plus there because this is an ionic compound. And so this is like science 10, right? If I had potassium and permanganate and I'm swapping and dropping the charges to come up with this ionic compound, I would have written down K plus and MnO4 minus, swap and drop the charges and you end up with this ionic compound. So like all that is tying into today's lesson, really. Okay, so K plus, MnO4 minus in an acidic, acidic means I have H plus present. Iron 2 sulfate, again an ionic compound, which would dissociate into Fe2 pluses and SO4 two minuses. And the solution part tells me that I have water present. So I'm just taking my read and comprehension of that sentence and I'm pulling out all the species that are floating around in this situation. Okay, so now I have my species list, that's number one. Number two, I find my strongest reducing agent and write its half reaction. So if you remember on your uh, data booklet, we wrote down strongest reducing agent in that bottom right hand corner. So we're gonna put our finger on the bottom right hand corner and we're gonna try to find something that's in our species list, okay? So on the data booklet, I am looking at Li and then K and then BA, BA, and then CA, and then these arrows like this. So I'm only looking at this column. I am not looking at this other column, which is an electron and lithium plus, an electron and K plus. I'm not looking at this column for my reducing agents I'm only looking at these guys. Okay, so you put your finger, do I have lithium in my list? No. Do I have potassium in my list? No. What I have is potassium plus. Potassium plus. I do not have potassium. So I cannot choose it as my strongest reducing agent. I don't have it. So I gotta keep going. I don't have barium either. I don't have calcium either. Okay, I gotta keep going. I keep going and I see iron there, but I just learned that lesson. I don't have any iron, I have iron two plus. So I gotta keep going. And eventually, I work my way up till three quarters up the page probably, I have Fe2 plus. This is the first thing I hit that I have on my species list. So this becomes my strongest, whoo, my strongest reducing agent. So I found my strongest reducing agent and then I'm gonna write its half reaction. Okay, I need some board space here. Maybe on the side here, I'll just write lithium, potassium, et cetera, et cetera, not iron either, et cetera, et cetera, Fe2 plus. Okay, so that's what I see in my uh, data booklet. So my Fe2 plus, and I'm reading this backwards, okay? So I'm reading this like, I don't know, as if I'm in a different language right now and I'm reading right to left because this is my strongest reducing agent. It's the first one I came up with when I went up the list there. 
that this is going to lose one electron and become iron three plus. That's what I'm reading in my data booklet. And so I'm gonna write that down. Fe two plus is going to arrow one E minus plus Fe three plus. So I read it right to left and then I wrote it left to right. I'll say that again. I read it right to left and then I wrote it the proper way, the normal way for us. Okay, so I'm gonna play the same game. So that's number one, list my species. Number two, find my strongest reducing agent, write its half. And then number three, I'm gonna find the strongest oxidizing agent and write its half. So same game, take your finger, put it at the top. Do I have any Fe2 plus? No, I don't. Do I have any PbO2 plus sulfate, et cetera, et cetera? No, I don't. Do I have some MnO4 minus and H pluses? Oh yeah, I do have those, right? I have, I'm gonna use a different color now. I have some Fe, uh, so these two things. So this was my strongest reducing agent, but this partnership can work together to be my strongest oxidizing agent. I can only choose them if I have both of them, and I do, and they work as a partnership to be a very strong oxidizing agent. So I'm gonna write that reaction down as I see it in my data booklet. It has MnO4 minus and eight H pluses and five electrons, and they become an Mn2 plus and four H2Os. So I just read it exactly like it is on the data booklet and wrote it exactly like it is on the data booklet, okay? Okay, so listed my species, put my finger on the bottom right-hand corner, tried to find my strongest reducing agent. This is the first one I came in contact with that I have on my species list. I wrote it down. Then I put my finger on the top left-hand corner to try to find my strongest oxidizing agent, strongest oxidizing agent, and it wasn't F2, <coughs> and it wasn't PbO2 and SO4, two minus, I do have SO4 two minus, but I didn't have any of that lead oxide. And so the one I come up with is the acidified permanganate pair. Okay, so I wrote it down. So found list of my species, found my strongest reducing agent, wrote its half reaction, found the strongest oxidizing agent, wrote its half reaction. Now I'm back to, hey look, I got two half reactions here. I am going to uh, balance the electrons next. So if I have one electron being lost and five electrons being taken in, this has to happen five times for every one of those in order to uh, balance my electrons. And then I can write my net. So this is my, I'm getting, um, mm, don't want to erase that yet. Yeah, I'll erase this part. Okay, so this is my loss of electrons oxidation reducing agent. This is my gain of electrons reduction oxidizing agent, just because it's really good to practice that. And here's my net. I have five Fe2 pluses and an MnO4 minus, eight H pluses, becoming Mn2 plus, four waters, and five Fe3 pluses. So this is my net reaction. The last question it might ask you, and it's good to practice this too, is about the spontaneity rule. So is this a spontaneous reaction or not? If I look at my data booklet, I can see that my oxidizing agent is above my reducing agent. This waterfall will flow downwards spontaneously. So this will spontaneously happen. I will get a spontaneous reaction here. So that's the five step method. Let's do one more example together. Uh, actually, uh, you'll find the other example in your um, book. Yeah, anyway, predicting reactions.